keep everything and make sure everything's okay. You can see my face. I know I cannot see yours. Give me a minute. Confirm this is playing. And here we go. You can see my face. I know I cannot. Okay, good. Got a good sound check. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. Whoops. Capital letters, hello. I guess that's a screaming hello, meaning hello, hello. All right. Let's wait till this loads up. I need to catch the... Uh, Catch up to the speed. Now I just did this only the last 10 minutes. I was running. I told I said I would get something like this going. Okay. It looks like a little better lighting anyway. As soon as I get the speed up to the speed. Oops. Yep, no, I like it that way. All right, it looks like it's it's lagging on me. Is it lagging on you guys? The frozen, let me recycle, recycle my screen. I'm, I can see my screen, so that way I can see what you're watching. Good. Okay. Hey, Tom. Earthling, Earthling. All right. So for fun, I changed the slenderness factor or scale, if you will. It's not really scale, but it's, it's close. It's close enough for what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to remove this off, and I'll do it live. So you can see what would happen if you had this on, for example. Oh, wow, that would have given a substantial uh, girder, if you will. Let's go ahead and remove that girder, that part that I left on. And I can replace that with a bunch of blister bars, they call them. But we'll pass on that. Now, as we look at this scale, this is number, so you look at it. This is 10. 11 and here's 12. This is solid at this point. Imagine how nice that have been had that been solid, right? This part right here solid. We're trying to wait for it to catch up. You can see how it would really stabilize. It would make this whole back piece a truss system. Part of the truss, right? This last one transferring the loads. But let's it didn't happen. So let's go ahead and remove that. So doing it live, let me cut this out. Give me a second to put it down and cut it. So let's cut it and hopefully you'll start visualizing what's going on here. I got any food or anything on my face, you guys, you know? Hey, 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 hey. I apologize. You make me self, uh, self-conscious on live videos like this. Not really. I just like saying it. I can only be self-conscious if I worry about what you think. I do worry about what you think. Everyone does. We have a ability to do that. But I would know you would be trolling me at that point. Let's go ahead and remove this. I'm waiting for it to catch up for me. So bear with me for a minute. Bear with it while it catches up so I can see where I am. Okay. So now let's remove this. Now we have roughly an idea of what this system would look system looks like. Again, I'm waiting for the screen to catch up. This is decorative piece here, and it's got nodules. I'm sorry, um, blister bars, but they didn't fail. Now the question is, I think it was Tom, or a lot of people asked me, and I asked myself at one point, what failed first, the canopy or the deck? Oddly, today I'm going to tell you neither failed first. They fail together, and how do I? How can I prove that statement, if you will? And oddly, this. So this is, you know, guys. I like doing a, um, playing a devil devil's advocate against some of my theories. So I'm trying to make myself say that this bridge is, that this was a, um, that this could work. With that said. It's real hard to say that, right? Because, um, you know, the amygdala theory I have, I've, I've got so many videos saying it's just junk, junk, junk. So it's very hard to say now, how could I make it work? So let's just work on that now. <laughs> how could I make it work? Well, look what I did here. I left, I left more sub substance between these two here as they transfer off the deck. You, uh, theoretically, you would do it across everything um, to give it more 
more substance there. But we're talking about, let me grab it. You guys should look up Euler, Euler, Euler buckler system, E-U-L, Euler. Um, so Euler, it should be buckling. That Everyone's claiming that this thing buckle, right? For it to buckle, oh, yeah, I'm really behind. Waiting for it to catch up. But even though I can't see myself, I know I can't dig my nose or anything. I can scratch it. I feel like I got some of that. Maybe something on my lash. All right. It's a noodle, right? So it's pretty It's pretty straight. As I put a load, and you guys can't, hmm, you sure could see it. There we go. So as I put a load on this, it it's com it compresses, right? The compressive it's a compressive load, but if it compresses too much, it will bow out. It will buckle out in the middle. That's what's happening. You see it? It's it's displacing, right? And um, with concrete and the steel is buckling, it's going to push it in the outwards outward capacity like a belly. And perhaps I can show you a couple of quick Google searches on that. Um, you also get that happening sometimes where it will blow out in any capacity. You'll see it blow out. Do we see in the drawing, in the failed system before uh, the images they show, do we see failed in that capacity? No, we see, we see, we see this. We are looking at this. Two, we are looking at multiple sections. I'll call that the top half that we look at no typically, and that's the bottom half. We're looking at multiple multiple sections where they're putting tape measures down into here at this point. Here's number 12. Let's see, if, as you see it, as you're looking at it on line, I actually have that. Yeah, it still works. I'm just waiting for it to catch up. We see them sticking the tape measure down there and going down quite some inches. That's the orientation of it. So I, I did a incline forces, you know, how incline forces act, how it acts, acts uh, forces acting on an incline. This would be an incline. Also, it's compressive, right? So look, look at this as I do this. Oh, wow, look at that. Look what happens when it's broken and I compress it. Huh. It appears that it doesn't magically still act like one piece, that each one will, will respond differently because they're no longer connected. They're no longer connected. And look, as you would expect, and I'm trying to be fair about this. Let's see if I push that one higher. I'm taking it. Let's see if I push this one lower so there's no magic going on here. You see, it keeps it keeps reacting. It reacts sooner than this one. But this is what the load applied. Now, and I did two things here. I didn't do anything tricky for anybody who's smart. No, I didn't put this one forward and then push it this way. That would be a tricky way of trying to manipulate the answer. I'll change it around and do this way too, applying the load. You see, it doesn't take much, but this one's going to show more of a reaction. As you look at all the split images of this while it's in place, you don't see that. You see it's falling apart with it forward and backwards like this, literally where you can stick a, 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 a um, brick layers, brick layers or block layers, uh, I don't want to call it tape. Their measuring device down there, it opens up, you know, it's six foot, six foot deal. You can literally stick it down there and you know the dimensions of that. They're like almost a quarter inch thick, probably three sixteenths thick, something about there. Um, and they're able to stick that down there sideways. Now imagine if it was, and it looks pretty plumb. So you're going pretty good. Now, if I stick it on an angle, it would lean back towards me and I would see a shadow behind here as the photograph was taken, maybe it was a flash one or not. I gotta evaluate that more, whether well, there's a flash taken, that would give me depth. I'd be able to see the shadow now and try to play around with that. Um, but that, to get more data out of their own images that they put online. But now you see what's happening there. So let's translate this to our toy model here. And yes, I can take, I can continue this up and take this off right there. So let's let's do that. I just wanted to show you what it looked like for a second. Let's do that real quickly. When I say let's, you guys are playing along, so 
you guys are you guys are the uh, let us do it. You're part of the us. Well, if I cut all the way through this, I'm going to screw up my whole design, my whole uh, presentation a little bit. So let's do this one too. All right, that one gets real thin now. Doesn't take much. Hold on a second. Now we're 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 about where we where it is roughly, and this is just concept. This is not obviously to scale. So what happens? Look at me compress on this. Watch me. Comp I'm I'm actually compressing my hand on it. See the reaction. See if you can see the flex in it. It does get some some reaction to it towards you towards facing towards you and of course this is could be my foam etc but this is this the center your your points your point loads are here and here off to my right hand and so if i were to put pressure here i'm waiting for it to catch up let me use my chin actually it's the dead load in the center of the bridge in general catching up all i need is one of the numbers here oh this is, it could be whatever right so waiting for it to catch up as you can see it's pretty darn it transfers the loads pretty good, doesn't it? I'm waiting for it to catch up. I'm, I'm applying load. Uh, let's see if I can show, show you with my chin here so I can crumple a little bit my chin. If I can get this fleshy part to crumple, to loosen up a little bit so you can, so you can visualize the, the force. You see how strong this structure is? It's transferring the loads. You got some spans here, but the loads are going to be each one will be the pipes on each one of these guys also coming it coming from the oh, wrong direction. Under, yeah, it will be this direction. So now this is the guy in question. Number uh, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is number 12. This is where we see this is where we see the splitting at on number 12. They don't show it all, but clearly it just didn't break right there. So there's a splitting action. This is what I just showed or tried to demonstrate a moment ago. Hey Tom, solid uh, would not work with the origami, You're right? No lag. It's good, right? Cool. Thanks Tom. So then uh there's your split again. So that's that split there. So the question again is, did this break first or did this break first? If you can look at the video multiple times, which drove me crazy trying to see one break first. I could not because they're connected, not just here. As you see the bridge breaks, this is still connected. And this is going to explain why this is going to explain why neither one of these broke first. You know, theoretically. Theoretically, it seems like one would break first, right? So, so I'll leave that open to that, that crumb, but, I'll, but you'll see how you'll come around to the same thinking. Um, and let's do that right now. So for this to break first, let's go with the bottom deck to break first. What for this to see, up to see, the break is right about here in the video. To see this break first, that means that this literally would have to have broken, broken free from the from from this point here I'm sorry it was broken free from here so it can start moving downwards and then this would break secondary right but we don't see that this is breaking first tearing away from here when you watch the collapse you'll see that all everything from this part of the pen downwards is all intact everything from this part of the pen correction everything from about this part of the pen downward is intact as it's going down as it's going down towards the ground so we have if that's the case so we have we can eliminate so just i'm going to work my way from this way forward we can eliminate that it didn't break here it didn't break here it didn't break here we see in the video it didn't break here it didn't break here it didn't break here that's still connected it's still connected here this is still connected here okay so now we're back down to where as we know the video part this part so we're talking about that these two pieces break separately 
did they, did you see this in a video? Did anyone see this in a video? We're going to use this. This section here will be from here back. So as I show it to you, it'll be from where my hands are back to this side. Did you see this? Break, break. Did anyone, did anyone see this? Break, break. Well, we know of the top. Let's talk about the top now. The top broke first. Imagine if this is not breaking first. The top breaks first. Well, look what happened there. I got the top breaking first and the bottom can't break, is not moving. As it breaks first, you would have to have seen compression in this section here. Not down here, because we already established nothing's broken there. Video shows it. So you'd have to see compression here for the top roof, the canopy to break first. You'd have to see this buckle out. This would have to blow out. You want this one? And I would say number this guy here also. For that to happen, you'd need this to move also or don't move. But if this was the load was here to break downwards, breaking first, well, then what are you saying? What do you visual, visualize? You're saying that the load from here, because this is not broken, and it's not broken here, saying the load from between here and here just all of a sudden decided to go like this. If that was possible, these would have to have be, be in, buckled. They'd have to get out of the way. Or the bottom deck would have to lower itself, get out of the way to allow for that action. Now we will we'll accomplish that. So I'm showing that no, this did not move first. It's not. It's not possible. And with the with the data we have, and the bottom did not move first. If the bottom moved first, right? So let's have the bottom moving first. Right about there is where the break is. For it to move first, look what happened. Look at the look at the cantilever, if you will. Where are you? You're getting it. You're getting it breaking first. Look what happens to the bottom deck when I move it downwards. Well, it breaks free right here. For it to move down, it's got to break free. Or it's got to break free there or tear apart at that point. It's got to break free. But for it to move downwards, to move, it's displacing something. Remember equilibrium. It's still connected. These are still connected. I am self-conscious about this finger I messed up. So you can tease me about it. But I am, maybe that'll get me over it. But I'm self-conscious about it. I slammed it with a sledgehammer. Um, all my fault. So, um the uh gosh i hate that finger it's my own finger i hate it it's attacking me Ugh. okay straighten up finger so um from here and i like it because it used to be my pointing finger so now um yeah i digress so now the uh for this to move down you'd have to have a break here i'm going to use that finger anyway and or a break here. We do not see as the bridge is falling. You don't see it torn apart here. You do not see it torn apart here. We only know not what we have is that this, the brakes are right here. My think where my finger is. Brakes are here, right about there, and break is here. Now the loads, it theoretically, as everyone visualized, is transferring down these uprights uh, diagonals and transferring over to the pier over here, left and right, north and south, west and east, however you like to orient yourself, transferring down to this, the pier, here's the pier. What we know, hey John, glad you jumped in. So what we know is we have a split in here though, per the photographs pre-meeting, right? Or post-meeting, pre-meeting. And obviously post-meeting, because they didn't, it didn't fix itself. But let's do this. Let's put let's put a crack in here. And I'm going to use my knife. And I'm going all the way through with it. They did not show it all the way through, but I am taking some liberties because I'm saying it's insignificant. You can call it three quarter or not. Actually, that would that would cause a rotation if you uh, if it was imbalanced. Remember, everything's equilibrium. So if I put an L-shaped weird ass support on it. It's going to, you know, have its issues. So now we have, it's going to not be in equilibrium. You could make it work, though. You'd have to make that L designed to transfer the load without torquing, without twisting. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's this part that's defective in this, that we saw in the photographs. We actually saw from the back this side. I think the photographs are showing. From this side, they showed us they, they, they were quite 
quite nasty with their data. So I'm actually going to flip it around per photographs. So we see, and I'm being nice, being a nice clean cut there. You tell me if the loads transfer down, and now we're on the other side of the bridge. Normally we see the video, the images. Oh no, we're on the driver. We're on the side of the vehicle. With the, uh, the, um, the vehicle, the camera guy, the guy with the camera. We're on that side now. The bus is to the right. This is the. This is 10, this is 11 and 12. I'm just looking at the profile, trying to remember. So I believe this is number, this will be number uh, 11, number 10. Here's this crack, right? So it can't take the load. Oddly though, very oddly, this whole, this shows that the design was in <laughs> keyboard. I had to give it a blow off. Anyway, I gotta be nice. So oddly enough, this shows this design was not functioning and you couldn't have done this any other way to prove what i'm going to say is that if this was functioning if this design was functionally transferring the loads like it should theoretically like we like we theorize it should because no one's come forward and said this is exactly how we we we, we wanted it to transfer the loads down number 11 to here this is a theory we all have guys we do not have any data that says that they they said that number 11 is supposed to take any load going over to the end of the deck it's only a theory we have. Remember, my one of my initial theories were that, heck, what if all the post tensioning in this was designed to take all the load? So I, I, I leave that open. I leave that open to uh, to yet to be resolved, to be stated. And I'm never going to trust. You know, I got too many bad data files, and I'm never going to trust the uh, NTSB's report. This is why Denny Pate would be the what reason why you'd want to give him immunity and let him toast everybody else. You know, take away his license and everything else. And yes, he gets sued, but give him immunity from prosecution. But wait, no one's trying to prosecute him. Oh, well. So there's no reason for him to get immunity. And so if this is designed to go this way, everyone that thinks it should go down number 11, including me, would think that it should go down number 11, transferring the loads in, in a, in a, um, and a reversal pattern, but this is a, this is a people pattern. This is 50 pounds per square foot, I think it roughly is. So the loads are not that not that. You know, I don't know how many people are going to be on there. You know, what they had events there. Yeah, you could probably pack this whole thing wall to wall, and possibly easily exceed your 50 pounds per square foot with the way people weigh these days. Um, but which will create a deflection or non-engineered uh, load. And that's literally non-engineered load. If you engineered a 50 pounds per square foot and you put these 400 pound people on it, but it's Floridians, right? They're not that heavy, mostly, right? Ooh, so there we go. I was trying to do something, but that's gonna work in our favor. So if for this to buckle, right? Let's, let's, let, me, let me put a load on it, starting it to buckle. That's kind of cool. I accidentally did that. I wanted to do the split way to make it happen. And I still do. So all I did, but for fairness, I, I split that by mistake. For that to buckle, I'm putting my hands on it, creating the load. The load is here. Remember that the dead load is here. It's not a concentrated load here, except for the post-tensioning created a concentrated load. So that's that's another thing you have to take into consideration. The load is still here, pulling, imagine it pulling down. And that would be equilibrium, right? You can call it gravity. I call it the way of the bridge, trying to find equilibrium. It's clearly in space, and for it to find equilibrium, it, it transfers its loads out to the end columns. And in theory, you don't want the deflection in here unless they design it for deflection for movement, like you know the uh, earthquake, hurricanes, and all the stuff they down have down there. So as I, put, I'm trying to put load here, visualize this, guys, for you. The load is downward at this point, trying to do this. Here's my, my loads down here trying to pull, trying to pull downwards. The dead load of it wants to do that. So you see what happens there, the bottom deck? It gets compressive. See that thing there, what happened there? See how it crinked crink up? That's the compressive part. And down here, this became on the tension, became taut. Compressive, tension. Now, this, so you can visualize this top canopy. It's radius beautifully so like this. It also 
um, will want to do the same thing. Will want to, you want to see tension down here and compression up here. The same deal here and here. Tension down here, compressive up here. If it was, but if it was deflecting at that point, you just saw what I did. You would see a break in this concrete more than likely, depending on how elastic it is. I don't think it was that elastic. We didn't see any breaks there. We saw it actually do pretty damn well as it landed. And then it continue its failure. Getting back to this, this is the major one. So you can see that if that's the case, it's doing this, right? If it wants to break in the middle, if it wants to pull down in the middle, what does it do to this one? This one becomes in tension. Tension, not, not so much compressive. And, and that would explain or could explain, and I'm not, I'm not owning this, but that could explain why we don't see any, um, any uh, buckling inside this. But this was really in tension. Now, I'm going to remove this altogether and show you what happens. And the reason why I think I can remove it is because it did not experience any buckling. It didn't experience any load. It, a little bit of load. Would have, okay, we're going to get a cat in the image. You said my cat. My boy, George. Come here, George. Introduce yourself. This is George. He needs a little love. Got a little motor going. Good job, George. All right. So there's George. All right. George was astray. He got picked up. So as we do the, as you see the, this, it's buckling. You can't put all this weight on there, these hundreds of tons of weight, and you tell me that this experience is no buckling under all that weight. And that's my point is it's not under load. It is not under load. Number 11, George, please. I know you want your spot, right? George is a, hold on. I got to move it for George. He wants to sit down here next to me. He does the computer thing a lot. You know what cats are. All right, good job, George. So I'm saying it's not under load. I've always theorized it wasn't under load. When I showed the last photograph, I was even more so. So now I'm going to remove this. Thanks, George. Thanks for the headbutt. I was looking forward to that. I'm going to remove this to, to, that, to that extent. You clearly see... Sorry guys, I heard uh, my heater come on, then not come on. I thought I did. So I'm gonna move it to that extent. What do you notice? This can't, this, now you know it can't have any load, right? Clearly you know it can't have any load. You can see it clearly. No load can go to there. But the bridge doesn't fail yet, why? Because the loads come over to here, and they, since you see there's no, it's no buckling on that, let's talk about no load being on there, it's in tension. Why is it in tension? Because the loads will then come down number 10. What does it do from number 10? Hey, George. I guess you guys should see George while we're, while we're doing this. Let me give George a little better lighting. Stay there, George. George looking. There you go. Much better lighting on George. I think. I thought. Well, anyway, he's gone. So now you see that if the loads are coming down number 10, right? They make it over, they're trying to make it to here. Out to here to the pier. Out to the pier. So how do they get out to the pier? It, you have no choice for it to go out to the pier between here and here. This is non-load bearing at this point, my theoretical explanation. So it's got this span, this unsupported, this is the span, right? So right about there. Or was it here? I don't, I don't, I don't recall exactly. And then from here, this number ten, we have a node, a blister bar, a blister bar on top of here. George, now, now you know you're interfering with my action, man. Come on, you're like a guy. Hold on. Let's get up there, blister bar. So you got the blister bar here. The blister bar, why I had to put it up there is that notice that it has its own. It's like a forty-five over here, roughly. It, it transfers a load, I think, right on the other side of it. Come on, George, 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 chill, man. You're, you're messing up my handwriting. No, that's probably all me. The blister bar, the end of the blister bar is right about there. That's where we get our other crack, our other break. 
because the under support is bad. George. He's sniffing the uh, foam, and not this, the other this stuff I just cut. The unsupported span now is from here to here with the blister bar. And let me do the blister bar like this, just so you can visualize it more. That's the end of the blister bar, but it's up top here, right? It's up top there. So the blister bar is here. The end of the blister bar, transference load. It's, it's contact point there. It's holding up great there, and it's holding up great here until it no longer can, until this is over, is, is not designed to take the loads in the way they set it up. It's not designed to take the loads somewhere, and this is the, the failure zone. I'm going to put an X there. So now you see how the loads come down 10. If number 11 is not supporting, which it's, it's, it's not, it's intention, I believe. It's coming down here, so tra loads transfer from 10 over to here under this decking material here, this small limited decking material and a this small canopy material with, uh, with only four, two connections, four, one, two. Oh, gosh, I don't know how many are in there right now. Four post-tension members are inside there. It can't, take the it can't take the load. It can't take it. It's trying to transfer it out to the pier. It can't do it. That's why you don't see failure down here because these are still transferring the load pretty significantly. Whereas this guy, I'm saying, is not transferring the load, forcing it down number 10. Because by default, if I remove number 11, it's still the loads will still translate out to the end of the pier. They have no choice at that point but to do number 10, now making this an unsupported span. This tension. So this, that breaking, could have simply been the middle dropping down, creating tension in this, helping with that, along with them post-tensioning this, causing that member, the uh, steel, I call it a member, I meant the steel reinforcing the bar to buckle the number one, I mean, number eight or number seven, this number magical number seven that can't be found anywhere in this entire structure. Could they find a number seven steel to test? I just find that beyond belief. And not, not beyond belief. I find it, I found it a lie. I find it a lie that you can't find in all this uh, number seven rebar that you cannot test. I'm talking about NTSB. Now, with one exception to that, you tell me, oh, we only put a number seven rebar. Um, one place I could say, uh, the number seven rebar is trying to think where you would have to one this one little cross member one magical piece we had it right about there and that's where it bent up and it got deformed so much that we couldn't test it for deformation that's what you're testing it for and yet so you would tell me you had some magical reason to put a number seven right about here because the rest of this was salvageable no number seven down here you could have grabbed and tested sure there was over here anyway I don't know what a seven is. I, you know, it's a magical bird. I remember I said they're going to come up with a magical bird. It appears that's going to be number seven rebar um, to blame it on. The magical bird is the bird that flew, landed on this. They didn't calculate for the magical bird weighing 58 tons. It's invisible. It landed here and caused the bridge to fail. So far, that season is number seven magical. Number seven rebar is what I keep finding. And this magically with all these. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm attacking the other engineers here. I see now that you get all these theories from George. Who's George? Oh, yeah. George is a. <laughs> oh, yeah. George uh, George owns me. George owns me. Sometimes, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I tell him I'm a grown man, man. You can't make me sit down. And sure enough, I'll sit down. You know, if it wasn't for Ted, I wouldn't relax at all if it wasn't for George. And George, I'm not quite Bruce yet. Bruce is the newfound last summer. All right. So there we have it. Now. You can see that this, I'm going, now I'm actually trying to test it to failure. I'm twerking, twer twerking it. I'm, eh, it's not going to really experience that force, is it? I'm putting load downwards and a thumb rotation like this. And you can see this is just styrofoam. We got some buckling here. See the buckling there? See that? Let's see if you can see it better. You know, my, 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 that's what I'm talking about. You have to cut this stuff just right.
But look, look at look what happened there. That one couldn't take the four. It it buckled. It's buckling right here. I'm gonna flip this around and watch right here at this crease. Also, I need to stand up. And make sure. Yeah. So some of it's twisting. I'm not trying to. I'm not. I'm trying to be trying to be fair about this. But did you see this break? I didn't. So oddly, and this is not to scale. It's it's like close for me to just do my video and help you explain it. You can do one to scale if you like, and that would be pretty easy. You would just measure the uh, get the drawings, figure out which angle is on each one of these, scale it, and draw one up, and you can do it exactly. And you can start putting loads on here if you want to for fun, which I I could do. But I already see it, so I don't need to go that far. If you need to see it that next step, send me some money, and I'll do it. Actually, I don't want to do it, so don't send me any money. Um, eh, unless you're going to send me money for my my uh, my charity that I do for uh, elderly people when I run into them. In that case, yes, I would do it. It would take me some time to scale it. Scale it, and I'd put loads on it, weight on it. So, But then I would be using what material? It would be unfair without knowing. I'd have to find something, a material that would be equal to concrete and scale to, to do that. And then I don't know what that would be. It wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fair. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair. So look what happens now as this guy's out. As I put a load here, look, look at that shift. Right here in my in my round my thumb now that I've got it separated. Compression, right? A buckling effect. But if no load's there, I'm saying again, no load was there. This was already downward, a downward force, which was a tension. And this became intention. And that's why we don't see any buckling. Okay, I'm breaking it free now. Now I keep doing it until I'm seeing what's ha happening. I broke it free there. I'm I'm just really working it now. This should be your driver's side as you're looking towards me. I'm working it. So we got a break here just for fun. But we got too much movement. This is going to be my movement's too great. Because that didn't do that in real life. It didn't come out and it didn't force its way over there and it didn't break there. So I guess I got to cut my losses now with uh, playing around with this model. All right. Hope that was fun. Um, hope that was fun for you and help you understand why this was how the loads transferred from 10 over to here from the top of 10, 11 over to here and how they resolve themselves with the node and resolve the themselves between here and here. And it shows right about there to break, somewhere about there, breaking together. Come, yeah, I can do that. Let's call that the node. And right about, I can't remember the video. I think it was closer to here, wasn't it? Wasn't it closer to, closer to here? And this one was over here by the node. I'm going with that. Ah, didn't mean to go that far. I wanted to break it. Well, the top, you can see a break. So we go break, but look what happened. Away. Away. Because, oh, I'm sorry, it pushes, it pushes this top over. This is pinned to the, in my left hand, uh, left hand, which is your right hand as you see it. Whoa, let me pull this down. This is pinned, meaning it can't move. So I'm going to try to in space here, which is going to be pretty damn hard. I'm going to put my elbow down. If this falls, look at my, my right finger is going to go this way. Because the way it's shaped, right, as it falls down, it's going to push my right finger outwards. As I pull this down. And it's going down. So this is pinned mostly here too. And it's getting its movement from the downward, uh, downward direction, right? But this is pinned in my left hand. I can't keep moving that left hand. If I don't move the left hand, you see it has no choice but to push away like this. Once it's pushing away, I'm 
Trying to remember how this was connected. Here. This is further back, isn't it? Yeah. This my my I'm out of scale now. Oh well, I'm gonna take some liberties here. Liberty. Liberty. Oh man, I broke it. I broke my liberty. Hold on a second. Gosh. I needed that. I really need that. Bear with me. I gotta grab some tape. I needed that to, to do it. Bear with me, I grab tape. Bear with me. George, George, George. All right, hopefully you guys are still there. Ah, here we go. Got to put this back together a little bit. Humpty Dumpty real quick. I needed that to act as one. So a little tape action. Same thing they wanted to do with the bridge. I'm doing in real life now. Put this back together there. Take a little liberty on that one. George, relax for a minute. Relax, buddy. Relax, buddy. Okay, back up and running. Ish. So pinned in my left hand, which is your right hand as you see it. Pinned there. And it's rotating down. So both of these broke together, top and bottom, acted as one. Whew. Breaking away, this is going towards the ground. This is pinned, in, pinned at this location to the right. Now, notice I don't have any room to go down if it's doing that, because if it's pinned, it can't, see my right, my thumb is, my, my pinky finger is moving outwards? Well, it can't do that. You look at the video, as I showed in one of my video, the top part pushes away. So when this does this, it breaks. It breaks it right here. And pushes away like that. Before pulling it back, it's still got cables in it. So as it pushes away, it looks like that. Hopefully you guys saw it, you can pause it. It looks like it's breaking away. And then this as it accelerates to the ground, pulls the top part back towards it. It lands on there, starts crumbling downwards, crumble, crushing downwards. Go, 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 this breaks down. But this is still, this then breaks free of the, whoop, breaks free of the support, slides down the wall, the bottom deck slides down the wall, lands across the uh, New Jersey barrier, Jersey barrier, breaks. This continues its uh, rotation across the top, leaning back on top of the pier. This is still at the pier at this point. And that's what you will look at from that side. And from the other side, we see it like that. But from that side, and here's your pier, up top here, is the pier, here's the bottom of the road, uh, close to the roadway deck. And that's what we look at, that's what we see.
that's what we see when we're looking at it on the ground. This is kind of broken and still sticking up here a little bit more where where it uh where part of it um part of it stayed in place. Like that on top of the pier. So it's on the pier like that. And then these guys are crushed. They didn't make it. And this is where it crushes downwards. And you see it on top of the bottom deck. These uh, uprights, these uh, diagonals crushed. We couldn't take the load of the, you know, the impact. The impact load was enough to break them, cause them a buckle to complete failure and then crush. And this guy did not buckle and crush because it never made it to the ground, you know, with the, uh, with the impact forces. So that's what that looks like. And there's my model. And I've got all the vacuum in the cleanup now. End of video, right? End of video. And anything there? I see, yep. Anything? Anything? I'm going to end the video, and hopefully that's a little fun for you. Euler buckling knot connection. I'm just looking at my, my title. Knot. Connections were sound. Connections were sound. Connections were sound except for the load path was wrong. The load path was wrong. Remember now you understand that it, it's it's no no compression forces, no compressive force, none. Compressive forces were not transferring down number 11 as theoretically you think they would. Um, and again, all bets are off if the engineer decided that, oh, I never wanted number 11 to have compressive forces. I wanted number 10 to transfer the forces over. So everybody, including, you know, including, uh, well, everybody that doesn't, doesn't leave that open is missing, you know, is, is assuming too much. Look, it's everywhere now, right? All those beads um, is assuming too much. Vacuum time. But we should, we can assume, or we can think, I don't want to assume it, we can think that it should go down number 11. But then again, I thought it could just all be resolved because of lack of equilibrium from the post-tensioning. But that was not how I was, and that's not how I was disclosed so far. All right, any comments? Any comments? Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. I'm trying to think if I can say beat that up anymore. I guess not. I guess not. Let's put the let's put that back up. I guess not. Advanced Bearing and Supply Company. Inches and millimeters. Um, trying to think of anything else. I feel like I wanted to say something else about that. I can always delete this part at the end of the video. I'm just trying to think. There was something I wanted to say about the uh, transferring the loads, post tensioning, the nodes. I guess that's about it. I guess that's about it. I'll share one thing with you that I'm reading up for. I'll let you go. Industrial and Engineering Chemistry, November 1931. Look at that. I've got a, I've got a box of these to go through. Very, very interesting to read the old uh, engineering and science and formulas and thinking. Um, helps you get back to basics. Current day. You know, all that, all that's gone. All that basic thinking is gone because you didn't have to think basically now. You just, everything is plug in a formula and it does it look good and it just, it's just weird. Wow, look at the uh, glass line steel. See that? Glass line steel. What, was, what would that be current day? What would be your, uh, your, uh, your hot water heaters? Isn't that pretty? Look at the car they show. The old car, 19, again, this is 1931, November. Beautiful stuff. Here is the most efficient steam jacketed equipment so far developed. Look at that, 1931. This stuff is awesome to read and to go back to basics and, and, and see their thinking and their mindset and advance your brain from there. 
Um, I, I'm, I love hydraulics. I'm a freak for hydraulics. And here's hydraulic, hydraulic closing equipment. Wow. I'll, I'll, I'll actually read this cover to cover. It's, uh, it's some pretty stuff. Will Canada break the Belgian monopoly? November 1st, 1931. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff. I've got a case of these to go through, and then I'm donating it to the uh, one of the public libraries or college. Or college. Polymers. Catalyst oxidation of alcohols in the vapor phase. You know, this is some some very interesting stuff. Um, anyway, hope you guys can enjoy something beautiful like that. Maybe uh, maybe I should somehow scan a few pages and post them. It's uh, it's so much. I mean, I've been reading them for years now. All this old stuff. Every time I find it, and uh, it's it's very it's to me it's very easy reading. You know, probably more easy reading than today. Today they try to mix things up with uh, with formulas, tons of formulas. It's with them, and then you've got to wonder about the formula. You know, which why are you using that formula as opposed to another formula? And it changes your data somewhat when you're using different formulas. So you have to use some common sense. They were they were loaded in 1931. They were loaded with common sense. Um, Common sense was uh, the rule of the day, I think, back then. Now we lost all common sense. Now we're doing this. Well, oh, that tied in, didn't it? Now we're doing this uh, odd bridge stuff. So point number 11 was only for transport. Uh, so I'm glad you said that, Tom. No, I, it, Tom, no, I, I would say no. I don't think this bridge was designed to be the most efficient, if you will, because they they took away the, they made a, they changed the slenderness factor, something that people normally pay attention to on bridges and scale of this nature. You know, this 175 foot, you just can't say, you know what, I just want that thinner, make it six inches. You just can't do that. But yet they did that because they wanted to be, you know, the most, as you saw in some of the videos I made, the most cutting edge, pioneering. This is how the future is, not how it will look, but how it is, because we just built it. So it is not not how it will look. And we are the bridge engineering. Oh, great. Sorry, I think I lost you. No, I didn't. And we are meaning we uh, uh, FIU. We are the bridge engineering people of the future. So when we do it, everyone else will follow. Um, now they're, they're they're mute on that, right? So clearly, um, that, that's nasty. Interesting. I try to find where FIU did critiquing of other people's work as a bridge as bridge people. They're politicians. I could not find any articles at this time. Maybe you guys can. Where FIU did critiquing of bridges or structures. Yet they're claiming to be the bridge people. So what are you? You know, do some critiquing then. Tell us what went wrong. You know, show, let's see your papers. So it's it's odd. I find this odd that they, uh, you know, not, not you know, politically, I, I, it makes sense not to alienate, but um, they definitely have a high horse. So number 11, no, number 11, I didn't want that to come across that way. I'm saying that number 11 did not experience the forces it should. And now, and let's, so yes, I think number 11 was designed to take a load, Tom, based on, uh, oh, post-tension, right, that's what I'm going to say. Based on post tensioning, because remember, Danny Page said, "Put it back the way it was before the bridge move." It was not possible. It was not possible. You'd have to lift that load up, hold it, support it to put that post tensioning back the way it was before the bridge move, and then release the load again. Release your post tensioning. Release your bracing, and then see what what happens. What happens? But I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It, it 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 does make sense in a financial respect. It 100% doesn't make sense in an engineering respect. 
In other words, if you were to hire Denny Pate, Linda Fig, MCM, FIU, the state, F, the state uh, Florida Department of Transportation, their representative, if you were to hire them and say, hey, look, say I hire him, I, I, I see a crack right here. Let's use the same structure, it's mine. I see a crack right here, look, look at that, what do you think? And within two hours in a meeting, I get them all to say, nah, that's nothing, you're okay. Wouldn't that be amazing? Because I was able just now to get, support, and I'm gonna now, this hurts my amygdala to say it, I'm now gonna say it. I'm getting one of the best bridge builders in the nation, MCM, one of the best bridge engineers in the nation, FIG, one of the best, I mean, Florida Department of Transportation, one of the best Florida Department of Transportation was going to be represented there, so they're engineer. I'm going to get Florida International University, one of the best bridge engineer people, and their representative who they chose to represent them, which would be Bolt, Bolt, Bolt and Perch, Bolt and Perch, to represent them. I'm going to get them to even look at this, this crack. And in two hours, they're going to say, God, you're, it looks great, man. Why are, you, why are you worried about that? So what? You can stick a, a damn tape measure down so many inches. We don't see the problem there. Go ahead, man. You're good. You see my point there? Is that if I you hired them, none of them would have uh, would have signed off on that. None of them. In my opinion, none of them. So in my opinion, I'm not trying to slander anybody. In my opinion, none of them would have signed off on that. But clearly... They all did because there were no, there were no, there are none that are, have, have been disclosed of yet. Wait a minute. There was a, a, an objection of a question, if you will. Remember, should we support the, uh, should we, um, should we uh, um, support the structure? And Denny Pate saying, now nah, give a false sense of security. Remember that statement. So that was in that meeting. So if one said it, did that put the question in everybody's mind? And so therefore, your lack of of uh, of um, of standing up for support is that now implied consent that you actually agree with Denny P Denny Pate when he says no, it would give a false sense of security. So if you didn't document that you think otherwise then would you not be um, implied consenting? So that would mean, you know, you can blame them all for, for saying that they all said the same thing as Denny Pate would say at that point. All right, so that, that's, my, that's my thought on that. Yeah, too, too big to fail, right. This would have failed. Everything, the federal money would have been lost. Everybody's uh, credibility would have been shot. Um, that you do get, you know, but you don't get that that crack, that the crack, that huge crack that's disclosed so far, and of course is going to be, is a larger crack than that. In the photograph, they only show this, this part of it. Crack didn't just start here and end here. That crack is continuing. So, and hopefully they have another photograph of that. You know, the, usually these jobs like bridges, you'll have a camera that's always monitoring. Well, we know that from a distance, but usually they're a little, nah, now nah, they try to encompass the whole thing. So that camera was produced, positioned kind of weird. Um, all right, let me see anything else. And so that's that. I'm going to do one thing here. I'm going to. Well, that didn't work. I'm looking for the Hangouts, Google Hangouts. That's what I'm talking to you on. There it is. Got it. No, I wouldn't put this on my teeth. Don't do that. So this is what I was telling you. I want you guys to look up if you want to have a little fun. Look up Euler right here. And there's your buckling. 
here you guys over here not something else i was doing here you guys are here and down here is this guy here this guy this guy i said this guy but i like playing with words probably because i mispronounced so many of them all right going back to here so there's where i'm talking about number uh yeah number 11 that this just couldn't transfer it shows equilibrium wise it chose between the two of these it found equilibrium down number 10 and not down number 11 just because you put it there doesn't mean it's going to transfer there the loads transfer down 10 because the nature of things are equilibrium and equilibrium was found down 10 and not down 11. you see how long that long long number 11 is now yeah i am looking at this correctly right this is I've gotten this wrong once. Yeah. And you think I would have it memorized by this many times. So this is 11. Start running a little delts. So you can see equilibrium was found down here. Equilibrium put this in tension. I believe put it in tension. And perhaps their post-tensioning with the rods caused the cracks of the, of the, uh, put the, uh, the longitudinal, the long directional rebar in, tension compression which uh, resolved itself by buckling outwards talking about the rebar now and then causing that to crack or or it's the other way around that this thing does have a little dip here and it pulled itself apart here in the middle which i find i find that statement that i make to be i just i just can't i can't make that happen in my own mind even though i leave leaving it open i can't make that happen what i can make happen though is you putting uh it putting um compression in this member and it's resolving itself under the uh being surrounded by concrete the number eight rebar let's call it once that compression started dialing up i can see it buckling the rebar and cracking this with the beautiful way cracking it showing that crack in here now that was making number all the loads under equilibrium now going down 10. so talk about my lovely equilibrium what happens if I just remove number 10 and 11? Now it's right here's 10 and 11. Where does it go, guys? It obviously goes down number 10 for equilibrium reason, and it tries to reasons reasoning, and it will work its way across this to here, and it works its way across here to here. So that's it. So if I remove this one and this one, equilibrium still trying to make itself level, not gravity. I hate that term gravity. Sorry, guys. I'm crossing my uh my uh my uh, pet peeves out. Gravity is just, I got to say, gravity is just the stupidest thing ever. Gravity is the stupidest thing ever. It's got too many, it's got a variable rule. It's based on weight. So you weigh more, you get the, you get the accelerator, your, your maximum velocity is X. You, another person's maximum velocity is X. Well, what's gravity? It's a damn measurement. But equilibrium would say, yeah, it would, does based on weight and how things all affect each other. Equilibrium. Gravity, they try to say the apples to gravity, right? And they tell you everything falls the same. Yeah, well, they don't fall the same. A feather, a leaf, an apple, I don't care. You can you can show me all types of things of you can drop a pocket knife and a bowling ball together and say, Oh, they fell the same. I don't think they fell the same. I think equilibrium, they were affected by equilibrium each individually differently. Also, you put them close to each other. Don't put them close to each other. I also say that's that's an issue. That's an issue. You create drag and all. We know that with airplanes. They got to be a certain distance apart. If you're going to do something, I need to see the air. I want to see that you did it without any air. And since you can do it without air, and we know that under that other video I made, they fall equally. And then you say, oh, well, that's gravity doing it. How about we just evaluate the data, what we're looking at? A bowling ball and a feather falling together, and it's in a vacuum. Let's go from scratch there. Let's don't assume gravity's playing a field at this point. But you see some, but let's use my words, equilibrium. So now I'm going to be biased. Equilibrium says they're both being reacted upon based on what they're there. I'm coming back to this video, this thing. Being acted upon based on their own individual weights. And no, no, no maximum. No, you don't have to worry about any, any, uh, well, you can add it. Maximum velocity. Um, if you do if you, in a vacuum, but you're going to need more distance, obviously, because they did fall together. Um, I'm just trolling on that. I want you guys to try to fight me on gravity. I would love to find that I'm wrong. 
on gravity because then that means now I understand gravity better. Anybody can can do that. And believe me, I, I've been looking at videos that, but they're double dipping. They start talking about gravity, but then they want to expand on to Einstein. They want to snatch him up, and then they want to do Newton. I'm like, well, you're in, you're in the two opposite balls of the fields, two opposite fields. And Einstein is old data now because he couldn't do. He he based everything on you needed to see relative to something in speed. Me, I don't need to see something relative in speed to think of equilibrium. I don't need to know this bridge, see something in the background to know this bridge fell. So I don't think Einstein nailed it on that one. I get it. But just because we can't, you know, because we didn't see it relative to something doesn't mean it's not spinning. Like the earth's not spinning because we can't see it spinning. It doesn't mean it's not spinning. Um, so it's the same thing with gravity. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I'm just saying the the, uh, the 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 playing field of gravity is just stupid. That gravity on the moon can pull up the oceans, but it can't pull down my house. And you could argue that you you can play with me. Argue that it is pulling down your house. It's pulling down your. It's not. It's not. It's you know, house is under equilibrium, under equilibrium of all its surrounding of all the natures of all its products. If it wears down because of wind going against it, air well. Equilibrium took it down, <sighs> not gravity. Um, and I'm going to explain that in another video with foundations and cracking, that it's about equilibrium. Once you see my foundation video, you know what? I'm, I'm going to terminate this. I think I'll come back with an equilibrium video on foundations. And then, and then you'll see why I hate gravity so much. Hey, terminate the video. Wish you guys the best. And, you, yeah, please troll in. You won't be offending me by uh, – by supporting gravity, um, you might educate me. I'm really, I'm open to changing my position if I can find the truth. Sort of like, uh, you know, uh, you know, wishing God existed, the real, you know, a God that, that we talk about here, wishing they existed because then you got your death covered, right? Um, I do believe in creators, but not the gods that are uh, are currently. The two biases.